spending on advertising, but they're not knowing where the results are coming from. So how do they know which is most effective? So you have you as a business owner need to know that and keep track of that. Do you have a good way of keeping track of that? Well, there's different ways depending on the kind of marketing. Let's do a formula first and we'll come back to your question. This was something that was an eye-opener for me as far as understanding this, and it came from pay-per-click. And we'll talk about pay-per-click because that's easily trackable. And is anybody not familiar with what pay-per-click is? Basically, it's Google as one of the companies that does that. You can buy an ad, so when somebody Googles a keyword, your ad would pop up. And depending on how much you want to spend for that ad, let's say $2 per click, they will put you up there anytime somebody Googles the keywords you specify. You only pay when they click, which is why it's called pay-per-click. So let's do the formula for that. What you want is eyeballs. Eyeballs on your ad in the paper, at a speaking event, um, magazine, internet, whatever it is. So when things in terms of eyeballs. If you, if you multiply that by the click-through ratio, out of the people who see your ad, how many people are actually going to do something? In, in the internet, it's click on that ad. So for, if you're doing a pay-per-click, here's your, your Google search page, and my ad uh, clicks here. Like, let's say um, financial services, is that your business? Kind of health? Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. Okay, so let's say some, I Google that in Sacramento, and your ad pops up there. And if a 1,000 people per month Google those kinds of keywords, those are 1,000 eyeballs, okay? You're never going to get 100% of the people clicking on you. Even though you'd like that, you're, you're going to get a, a certain percentage. So we like to shoot for about 5%. 5% is a pretty high number, but it's just a good number to at least have in your head, right? So if we have, let's say, a 1,000, I'll, I'll use an example because I know this, how this worked for her. She does permanent makeup, very niche. And for those gentlemen who don't know what that is, it's when you have your uh, eyeliner tattooed on your eyes so you don't have to worry about it anymore. So very spe specialized market. There weren't a lot of queries on the internet. They're actually about 500, but let's say they were 1,000 per month. But there was enough tra traffic that we could justify the, the cost, and then the cost wasn't too much. But let's say we got a 5% click-through ratio, if we were just investigating that. If there's 1,000 queries per month, and we get a 5% click-through ratio, how many visitors does that get to our website? 50, right? And now we look at conversion. Remember we talked about conversion in number one? Whoops. If you have a bad website, mm -hmm. your conversion ratio isn't going to be very good. Mm -hmm. If you do the magic formula, it's going to be higher. So we're going to shoot for a 10% conversion rate. So 10% of those 50 actually do something. Now the conversion is, what was the call to action? Fill out this form, call for an appointment, um, get on my email list, because the conversion may not happen right now, but it gets them in the funnel, mm -hmm. right? So if you get 10% conversion out of the 50, how many potential customers do you now have? Five. Okay. Now, what is your close ratio? Meaning you as a business owner, if you talk to five people, how many customers will you get from that? Is it one out of five? Somebody said, I have four out of five. Well, great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So again, what is your close ratio? Somebody come up with a number. 50%, 40%. 40%? Okay, so that would be two customers new customers. Now what you want to do is, oh that's close ratio, that was uh, 40% and that makes two. Now what we need to ask you is what's the average value of that customer, right? How many knows what their average value is? There he is, I saw your hand first. What's your average value? This give me a round number. 495. 495, okay. So about $500? Okay. So if that put $1,000, now you have to look at profit margins and all that stuff too. $1,000 in Carrie's pocket, she now knows how much she wants to spend for that campaign, whether it's pay-per-click or an ad in the paper or whatever it is. And if you start to know those numbers and start to keep track of them, now you know what's going to work for you. Because I tell people, this works really well, especially for SEO. SEO is not the cheapest way to go. I don't know how much you charge, Mark, but my experience is it's not... Um, you know, it's in the hundreds of dollars per month. But that's okay if you're getting two new customers and they're worth $5,000 a piece, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
But you have to know your numbers in, in order to figure out if the marketing strategy is going to be good for you. Because free, it ain't free. Exactly. There's nothing free. There's time, there's energy spent, resources. So you want to be able to figure out what's going to work for me. So what you want to look at is what are my options on the internet? What are my options in other places? And I'll tell you my favorite, and I kind of skipped over the slide. If you go out in the parking lot right now, you'll see my car, and I actually have it not completely wrapped. I've got the back part of it wrapped. First of all, I bought a blue PT Cruiser because that's a pal car. They make it purple, but something that was different at the time because I want people to look. Because if I'm going to put signage on my car, I want people to look at it. And we put, a, it's actually this graphic, the Get Your Netting Gear graphic, colorful. I put internet marketing and a few things on there. Now the cost of that is $200. But do you know how much it costs to have a billboard? Does anybody Thousands. price the billboard? No. $10,000, $15,000 a month. Sure. Mm. You're driving your car everywhere, right? You never, I, I mean, I've had people, I had, we were in Ferrix Boulevard, Somebody stopped by uh, next to us at Ferrix Boulevard at a stoplight that rolled down his window. Do you have a car? <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, you just never know. Uh, actually, I was telling the guy who did my car wrap, have not closed any of those businesses at Prairie. You know, I've been stopped at a Rite Aid parking lots in a lot of different places. But we just finished a website for a Delta bedding up in Shingle Springs because he saw me twice a year at my sister's annual craft show. Because he, he's friends, uh, he's the husband of one of the her friends. So again, you just never know. So think about where your message could be and what's the return on investment. It only takes one customer, in my case, to pay for that car wrap. And that car wrap lasts for five years. So think about what um, that is for you. Let's see here. Okay. So it's just about doing the math. And again, this will be kind of outlined in your... your um, copy of the handouts, because there are no crystal balls. We may know how many queries there are, because Google will tell you this is how many queries in these keywords, which is why I like it, because it tells you. Um, but there's no crystal ball that we're always going to get to. There's a lot of depends. So what you need to do is start running the numbers and you know test and measure. Try different things. In fact, my uh, friend Linda Bigler, the business coach, says test and measure 10 different strategies a month. Try print ads, try the internet, try flyers, try different things. Keep track and figure out where the return is. Now you can always tweak stuff too. You know, see if, you, if you're running an ad, let's say in a bridal magazine, try different ads because there might be something that clicks with people that's different. Again, message. It doesn't always have to be the same. Try different uh, variations of a formula. And then just repeat. Because it, times change, right? Boy, we're living in an age where it's not the same next month. So what might not work last <coughs> month might work now because of the whole, whatever the focus is, whether it's politics or something. In fact, I was just talking to a guy who does bridal rental, or not bridal rental. Um, yeah, <laughs> rental, yeah, bridal <laughs> rental. He does rentals for bridal, bridal events. You know, the chairs and tables and stuff. What do you call that? Whatever it is. Party. We're talk, yeah, party <laughs> rental. Thank you. Party <laughs> rental. Thank you. And uh, we were talking about like when the weather changes. If he put all of a sudden on his front page of his website the thing about tents. I mean, that's really just focus, target, and market. What do people need now? <laughs> And being able to, you know, social networking is another great way to kind of get the word out. Hey, we're running a special. Or do you need a tent? Because it looks like rain. And a heater. And the heater, exactly. Okay. How am I doing on time? I didn't... Thank you, Gary. What time is it? It's Okay, good. See? We would have been done by now. we got one more C to go. <laughs> okay. The fourth C is the conduit. And doing this, you know, research... The stats are showing, I'll read you a few and you'll have this in your handout. 79% of smartphone users use their device to help with shopping. Whether they see um, something that they want at a store or at a trade show, they're using this to research. 79% is going up. 25% of US mobile phone users are mobile only, which means they never access through this. They're just living on this thing. That's what's the percentage? What's the percentage? 25%. Right now. It's, it's growing. I mean, this is just 
it's trending, as they say. Mobile searches have quadrupled in the last year. For many items, one in seven searches are now mobile. One in seven. 71% of smartphone users that see TV, press, or online ads do a mobile search. We just talked about that. And the last one is, the number of people accessing the mobile internet is expected to overtake the PC by 2015. I'd say soon. Yeah, it, I, I would not be surprised if it was soon enough. Yeah. Which Let's means if you are not prepared to address this, you're missing out on some of that. That's why it's the 4C. Okay. Again, apologize, I'm gonna leave that there. Can you see that okay? There you go. All right. Instead of me moving. Okay, this is a website. This is actually for, I was mentioning, somebody had the nice, Jasper, is she still here? Is no, she, yeah. Okay. Um, this is an artist, and I actually don't do this, it's I call it website intervention. Mm -hmm. I saw her at an art show, loved her stuff, and her website was awful. <laughs> I mean, seriously, bad. So I, I said, you don't have to hire me, but I want to buy some jewelry from you anyway. Mm -hmm. But take a look at what I've done, and if you don't like it, no obligation. But she loved it, so I, we're now working on the website. Uh, it has a slideshow, and just again, the magic formula. She does a blog when she travels, so we put a blog feed there. There's her, actually, Etsy is a store for artists, mm -hmm. so we have a feed there, so her mm -hmm. pieces are displayed on her website. Uh, there's a sign up for a newsletter so people will know where she's going to be and that kind of thing. Now, okay, this is her website on a smartphone. <coughs> Hard to read, and we can zoom in and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, we're making people do work where we're lazy, aren't we? <laughs> we like things simple. And Jeremy Epstein, do you know his name? I hadn't heard of him before. Apparently, he's a uh, marketing guru on the internet. He says, "Here's a news flash: If you have a website, you're already in the mobile world, and the chances mm -hmm. are you're making a terrible impression." <coughs> because it looks like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I did, for, we actually saw her over Thanksgiving, we actually converted her website to a mobile website. Perfect. Which is buttons and icons, and then it zooms up to a page that's specific, specific for the internet, I mean for the mobile phones. Mm -hmm. well, so with that's- those, with all of those of us with failing eyesight too, it's critical yeah. these days too, mm -hmm. because they have to pinch it every right. all the time, mm -hmm. it just drives you crazy. Exactly. Yeah, you'll just go to some other site. Yeah, exactly. Because we're, we're just kind of boom and zip. So, again, if you apply this magic formula to your mobile website, because the mobile audience, you don't want to take everything on your website and put it on your web or your mobile site, because that's probably going to be too much. Again, fine tune it for what's the most important thing for the mobile audience for the industry. So, like for her, she doesn't need a map, because she's never there anyway. She needs a schedule where she's going to be, maybe a link to a map for the different shows she does, how to get to her Etsy store, how to call her for custom design work. But she doesn't need all the other stuff that a restaurant might need, which would be hours, map, that kind of thing. So again, depending on your audience and your market, you just want to customize using the magic formula into something that's uh, mobile friendly. Optimizing your text images and widgets, because obviously, unless you've got things like Skype or something, this you can have a phone me now and it actually phones me. Mm. Um, putting in sound bites and videos. We we're talking about that. Videos are really cool. I don't like reading. I mean, I'm really lazy. Bullet points, videos, short stories, testimonials, sound bites. Again, what about, kind of YouTube, what about YouTube? You know, you know short, do, do a short, short video. Yeah, video. Again, depending on what your audience is. Now, Bill is videotaping mm -hmm. this. But for most of us, maybe a 30 second to two minute commercial. Because I like that because what we can't convey in words is the emotion. I mean, they can read the emotion, but the sincerity, the excitement, you can't film So use a video well, we're used or to audio. 20 and 30 second ads and now from mm -hmm. television. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just another way to use the technology. Anything beyond that gets a little <laughs> tedious. Yeah. So again, select your con uh, content based on what the audience needs to know now, not you know everything on your, your website. Okay. Does everybody know what a QR code is? Yes. Okay, so good. Don't have to educate you. Um, this is actually is, it was scheduled to go on my card today, but because of the rain, they couldn't do it. But again, I'm I'm just putting this on my car. 
Because again, now what people can do is instead of just getting my website name, you know, they're driving down the street, oh, well, I'm gonna write that name down or call that person. They can just snap it with their phone. They have access to something like that mobile website, which has a how to contact me, set an appointment, examples, whatever it might be. How Again, so do they have to be? You know, somebody said, well, are they gonna take a picture of you zooming down the freeway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. But you know, it's in a parking lot or something. But actually, it does, the, these, these QR cards can be relatively small. Um, so, and you, you do want to test it, but yes, you do. I, because of my businesses, I actually have a new uh, website now called marketingsquared.com. I want people them to see that QR code, right? So I made my QR code pretty big, but it doesn't have to be. If you've got words on your car or your print ad, you can just make that a little corner box. Do you have to have an app for that? <laughs> what you do is you get a QR code reader on your phone yes. and take a picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're free, free downloads generally. Size is an important issue, you say, because if you ever get out of a car on a highway, if you have the guts to pull over, <laughs> where you see a 75 <laughs> mile an hour sign, or Ooh. 70 on I-5, and you pull over, and you actually go look at that sign, the 70 oh, yeah. is about this tall. Yeah. Wow. And you have to stand back about <coughs> You know, but so the thing is, is if it's on a car and it's yeah. going at 50, yeah. yeah it I hope people don't. Good know. size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope. And they, they, somebody was saying, well, you better be a good driver <laughs> and not cut people off and do stuff because that's not good for marketing either. But <laughs> yeah, my goal right. wasn't to have people take it as they were driving by, <laughs> but it, mostly for the parking lots and Ingestors. things like that. And I know, Susan, one of the biggest things is now that I've done that and I have a QR code that, that now I know that it's not optimized for mm -hmm. small. Well, and see, I, that's why I started really thinking I need to talk to more businesses about this is because yes. a lot of people were sending to their YouTube video or to their um, website, and there's such an easy shortcut with a mobile website. It's just a subset of your regular website mm -hmm. scaled down. And that way, because I told Rick, the guy who's putting on my car, I said, I don't want to change that. So one of the tips I have for you, and this again, I'll be in the handouts, is, and I don't know if uh, the other internet people here would have another opinion, but it's, you can actually have a um, subdomain point to, to mm -hmm. your, your mobile website. Mm -hmm. So it's like m.mywebsite.com can point to your mm -hmm. mobile website. But also .mobi, M-O-B-I, instead of .com is considered the mobile standard. My suggestion at this point is to register the .mobi mm -hmm. because your competition will. will. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they might. I mean, not to say that they will, but for you know the ten dollars a month it costs to register it, I would rather have that yeah. than make the QR code go to that dot mobi domain name, and then you can have that dot mobi domain name go to a mobile website or whatever you want. You have control. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. See, it's one of those things. So I've been doing some reading. Um, and they're cheaper. What's that? Mobi extensions are cheaper. Yeah, for some reason they are. Huh. Th that may not last when people yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you can put those QR codes on everything now. So, some examples, and we were, we were kind of talking to different people. And how this idea came, I, would, I go to some art shows, especially during the summer when the weather's nice, and I look at handmade jewelry and, you know, gifts and things. And I'm picking up business cards. Now, I am not the best organizer of cards. I don't know about you, but I have stacks of business cards that have dust on them. <laughs> not a good thing. So if I want to contact somebody, how do I find that? Wouldn't it be cool if those artists had QR codes? I just go snap, save it in my phone, put it in a folder, so I know to find where the artists are or the business prospects or whoever they are, and keep that organized. So that's where the idea started. So having that QR code at a trade show on your business card at networking events like today, if, you're, if you know somebody who has a restaurant, having that QR code there so hey, did you like your meal today? Please leave a co positive comment for us. You know, make, makes it easy. Remember, Chuck me said, call to action, make it easy for them. Now they can just go snap, <coughs> that kind of thing. So these QR codes now have empowered every sin single printed material you can produce with internet power. Isn't that cool? I mean, you talk about the internet really give, helping businesses make connections with people because mm -hmm. testimonials from clients buy now buttons, schedule an appointment. Now everything you print has that power because you just put a QR code on it, send them to your mobile website and have the mobile website 
take this formula and convert them into customers? Somebody say cool. Cool. <laughs> 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 we're all yeah. nodding. It's well, the virtual nod. Yeah. The virtual <laughs> nod. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm going to need to absorb it a little bit more. Okay, this is something that's kind of a cool yeah. concept, too. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody is on their <coughs> smartphone and they go to your website, they happen to see my car, which has www.getyournetingyourgear.com, they go, oh, I'm going to type that in. You can have uh, logic on your website that will direct them to your mobile website because it senses that they are on a smartphone. I don't understand how 35, but it does. Mm. And they're not cool. So now you've controlled their experience so they will not have a bad experience on their smartphone. Mm. Yeah, so cool. Okay, um, I call this purple cowing your QR code. <laughs> when I made my mm -hmm. QR code, I said, it's brown cow. It looks like every other single QR code out there. How do I purple cow it? Well, you know, these are pretty forgiving. You'll notice I put a little check box behind it because I want to like check this box, check this box out, and the marking is squared. You can colorize it. There's a lot of different things you can do. But one thing to con do, you know, consider, especially if you're going to take the expense of putting it on something like your car or that, consider uh, purple cowing it. Just so you're different. I really talk about the value of that. Snap their head when they see it. Um, so you can actually, you can find more tips, examples, FAQs on marketingsquared.com. And also there's going to be a bonus offer at the end of this presentation. Okay. In summary, you got through the four C's. <laughs> and the fifth C? Well, I'm going to tell you about that. Okay, I'm put that little teaser there. There's actually five. <laughs> but then, oh my God, I can't handle another C. <laughs> Sorry. I think the fifth one would probably be confusing. Yeah. Okay. What's the, what's the first C? Conversion. Conversion. Why is that important? It's it's what's well, going to take that click into a customer. And if you don't have, if you have all the, uh, millions of people are hitting your website, your Facebook, or whatever your blog, and nobody's calling you, not good. So you have to make sure you focus on your conversion with this magic formula. Stickiness. Stickiness. Yeah. The grab. Yeah. The grab the attention stuff. What's the second C? Convergence. 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 Driving traffic there. Again, the best website in the world with no traffic doesn't do you any good either. So simple things like if you have a voicemail, hey, I'm not here right now, but please visit my website at www.com for more information. Mm -hmm. Driving traffic. How much did it cost you? Nothing. Zero. In this case, zero is a good number. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of strategies you can use to drive traffic that don't cost money. That you want to consider. What's the what's the third C? Cost effectiveness. Cost effectiveness. Now this is a pretty complicated formula, and what I offer is uh, we do what we call a dot com diagnostic. So the th it's free. Zero is a good number. If you want Bill or I to look at your website and kind of do some what I call diagnostics on it, you need a phone number or have you thought of these kinds of words or this kind of a picture? We will help you with that, and it's free. So then we can kind of go into some of these numbers if you have questions about that. What's the four C? How are they getting there? Again, you have to be considering whether they're mobile phones, desktops, 25 years. I think they're putting the internet on the, these TVs now, right? <laughs> what do you look like when you're this big? <laughs> I don't know that, but I have to test that. Okay, what's the fifth C? Closing. Closing. Actually, that's a call to action, which is part of the first C, but there's actually a fifth C. I didn't tell you about that. That was a trick question. <laughs> oh, no. It's actually collaboration. <coughs> Co-op marketing. Mm -hmm. If you have people who have the same target market as you, mm -hmm. but offer a different product and service, mm -hmm. how cool would it be to kind of co-op your, your marketing strategies so you're only paying n percent instead of 100%. Mm -hmm. So g actually get your net in here is my co-op market. Because I have people that do e-newsletters and graphics and car wraps and things like that because all those are, pe are important pieces of doing the whole thing, but I don't do them all and I don't want to do, them, do it all. But now if we're each directing traffic to one website, somebody may direct it there and say, oh, I, I need this. Oh, I didn't know they had this too. And all of a sudden you're kind of com compounding the benefits for everybody. So just some, I didn't want to go into detail on that, but I wanted to let you know there was a fifth seat. 
that can help you cut, with cut the costs. Okay, so hopefully, you, does, every, does anybody not have something on the to-do list? Because we'll give you one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, overwhelm. Okay, so if you're overwhelmed and you say, okay, I see some value there, but I'm overwhelmed, that's the call, Susan, and set up a free.com diagnostic, and we can kind of go over that. So that could be your to-do list, okay? Because um, it is a lot, and I do apologize for that, but I want to make sure you at least walked away with something that was either interesting, the aha, or the to-do. Now, if you go to uh, marketingsquared.com, now I'll tell you this. Been in technology for 35 years. I have coded in languages you wouldn't even, maybe you would, but you know, it's like, wow. Uh, things have changed a lot in the last 35 years. I don't like writing code anymore, because it's why reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. There's companies out there that specialize in mobilized websites and QR codes and all this kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the tools that I use are very customer friendly because the other thing that has bugged me um, in the course of my business is that there are other webmasters out there, and these are true stories, that one person said, oh, you're talking to Susan about rebuilding your website. If you do that, I'll take your website down. I guess oh, the website Nazis or something. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah, I mean, because they don't have the keys. It's like, oh, but they'll send a, a change to be done, and then they don't return their phone calls, and, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't give you heard short stories. And now what I say is 87% of the webmasters out there give the rest of us a bad name. I don't know if you feel that way. <laughs> but it's like, oh, you're a webmaster. You're one of those people. But I like giving the keys of your website to you mm -hmm. so that you have control. And when Susan talks about keys, she's talking about making sure that domain is registered to you. Mm -hmm. So you'll register the domain somewhere. GoDaddy is one of the big names, but Lord knows they're not the only ones out there. Yeah. So make sure the domain is always registered in your name and that you are the registrant and the administrative mm -hmm. contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, never let that expire. Right. Yeah. 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 So if you have the, the domain and you're the administrative content contact, then you can fire the webmaster, mm -hmm. and the opposite is true. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the other thing about the keys, and that's a really important part about knowing you're the name on the domain name, because that's happened before, where you couldn't get a hold of them and the name wasn't in the owner's name, mm -hmm. so we had to do other things. But the other thing is, when you know, most websites, are, it's pretty easy to build now. I mean, you don't have to be a programmer anymore to do stuff, just like you don't have to be a programmer to write a Word document. Yeah. or you do Facebook. There are good tools out there. So my goal with my clients is to give them the keys to their website, meaning that they can log in, make changes. They can always call me, but at least they know how in case it's Susan and Bill get hit by the bus. I don't know why I use that, because I don't walk in front of buses, but it's your <laughs> That's safe. probably why you use it. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> You'll never find me, or I mean, if I'm taking a picture of somebody else's QR yeah. code. It was, it was a major pile of are in Belize, and you can't get a hold of Exactly. <laughs> or, yeah, we don't want to pick up the phone. So <laughs> if you go to marketingsquare.com, there's a short, I think it's like 10 question survey. If you would please take that and give me some feedback for the presentation, something that was a good aha for you or something that we didn't quite cover enough or that might have been a little confusing, that will help me because we're planning on doing some videos and some webinars online, so that will help us uh, focus. And as a reward for that, you get two things. You actually can try setting up your own free mobile website because it's not that hard. Mm. If you need help, you can call us. Mm. But also, uh, we're gonna give, depending on what you decide to service, because we can do, um, purple cloud QR codes and a few other things. I'm gonna give you a 30 to 50, per, uh, 50 discount on that. So depending again what you do, as well as I'm gonna give a little back for the networking group because that was part of my uh, thank you to Rick for uh, those presentations. So if you're interested, please leave us a card or go to the survey and you can put your contact information there. If you would like me to email you the presentation from today, please leave me your email address. I can send that out to you as well. And does anybody have any questions? Overwhelmed, I was so thorough. Well, again, I hope you have learned something cool that you can take to help your business in 2012. Because again, what was the focus? <coughs> your customers. customers. It's not about the technology, even though it seemed like we were focusing on that. The focus is more qualified customers for you. So your phone will ring and productive put money in my pocket ways. So much success to all of you in 2012, and hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. And uh, to learn.